Thank you for joining me. I'm Gord Long. A reminder before we begin, do not trade from any of these slides. They are commentary for educational and discussion purposes only. Always consult a professional financial advisor before making any investment decisions. The purpose of the audio slides is to talk about the areas that are not updated in your monthly analytics and technical analysis report. This is based on our annual cycle as outlined on the subscription page on our site. We intentionally keep the technical analysis charts to the subscribers' reports so as not to confuse them with the drivers operating behind them. Drivers in the long term are primarily the fundamentals in the intermediate term risk and the short term is about confidence and sentiment. This month I'd like to cover some observations I have on one method to determine market tops. It is based on my personal experience in 1987, 2000, and 2007. I've seen this movie currently playing a few times before. I'd like to cover the following subjects listed here. As fall approaches, we have entered an often scary time for the market and investors. We have all the ingredients of serious problems, which we have discussed in previous videos. Now, however, we have in Washington, a three-headed policy monster in the form of Congress needing one, to raise the debt ceiling, two, pass a budget, and three, embark on tax reform, all major contentious legislation individually, but having near-term deadlines that they have to be met by. Globally, as John Malden, among many others, is currently articulating, the possibility of one of three black swans potentially triggering a global recession is a realistic possibility. We have the serious chance of one, Yellen overshooting monetary tightening, two, the ECB under Mario Drahi running out of bullets, like simply running out of bonds to buy, or a potential Chinese debt meltdown, which is overdue for some sort of adjustment. And there are many more that I could talk about. North Korea's nuclear threat, which borders on a modern-day Cuban Missile Crisis of the Kennedy era, in my mind. Devastating U.S. hurricanes in the form of Harvey and Irma and congressional aid that is required. Special Trump collusion investigation from the special uh, prosecutor. Uh, the just current crisis du jour of the DACA Dreamer issue. Uh, NAFTA negotiations appear to have collapsed. Brexit negotiations are not going well, and there's spillage there, and there's concerns of what it's doing to the UK economy. And the slew of central bank meetings and quantitative tightening announcements, we're expecting details to start to roll out here in the month of September. And of course, the latest disruption and startling Trump Twitter, which always tends to shock and, and catch the markets on the wrong side. It is a combination of all these that gives you a sense of a perfect storm that is looming, or at least a potential perfect storm. James Rickards is on the record outlining that he believes the powers to be are preparing for the eventuality of a global market disruption associated with quantitative tightening, forcing massive market shutdowns, or what he refers to as the big freeze. I was actively trading on the pre-market global exchanges the morning of 9-11, and attempted through about 9.55 that morning, that is, before the extent of what was going on became uh, quite evident over the airways. What I saw and witnessed firsthand from a market perspective was startling to me at the time. It wasn't just that the market never opened at 9.30, but I wasn't able to get fills on exchanges in Canada as an example, even though their market was supposed to be open and wasn't officially closed until much later. I saw firsthand how the global markets can be shut down with a flip of a switch, even though they are supposedly all independent and national entities. The power and control I saw exercise was a startling revelation in a day that itself was beyond the pale. Clearly, there is a level of coordination that can be brought to bear extremely quickly and very, very powerfully. How do you prepare for this situation? It presently feels like you have a gun to your head. At least that's how I feel on certain days. Do you stay in the markets? On the other hand, if you leave, how do you get any yield on your money? Is the game really capital preservation in the short term? And is that what it's really about? Unfortunately, trying to make this decision, it gets even more complicated and worse in another regard. Let's ignore all of the above and what we've been discussing. And we'll come back to all of this later. 
but assume it right now that it's only noise in the bigger picture. I am sure you have seen various versions of this illustration shown here many times in various forms. What I can tell you about this chart is that it will always get you out too early and in too late. What is missing is an understanding of how the markets actually transition. Let me explain. Warren Buffett is well known for describing the market as a slot machine in the short term, but a weighing machine in the longer term. In the long term, market fundamentals matter. But in the short term, according to Buffett, it is nothing short of a crapshoot. Spin the wheel, take your chance. All very catchy, but it does nothing to really help you time the market. In our work, we use a slightly different version of Buffett's idea. That is, in the short term, the market reacts to sentiment. In the intermediate term, the market is influenced by risk. And in the longer term, the market is controlled by the fundamentals. To some degree, this is a little more helpful regarding what to look for and your market timing. Nevertheless, it is nice, but it's not terribly helpful regarding its usability. However, when we understand that longer-term changes are initially signaled by a shift in fundamentals. This doesn't mean the market reacts. Matter of fact, they seldom react, which often goes unheralded and is typically ignored because of strong controlling sentiment. As fundamentals continue in, to improve from bottoms, slowly risk suggests that real risk-adjusted returns merit stepping in. Eventually, investors start to regain some confidence and the market responds. We must remember, at tops, market euphoria and greed ignores poor fundamentals, and then at the bottom, ignores improving fundamentals because of pessimism and fear. This doesn't tell us about timing, but it tells us about what is definitely ahead. Sentiment gives us an understanding about that timing. Few would argue we presently have some of the worst fundamentals in history regarding the financial markets and I have written and laid this out fairly significantly for at least a year now. Also we have obscene risk levels which offer terrible and certainly minimally poor potential returns no matter how you look at them or how you calculate it. This suggests that longer term fundamentals and the intermediate term risk have turned. When both have occurred this suggests we are in the later stages of a market top. This is important to recognize and to plan accordingly but you don't have the timing yet because it can go on for quite a period of time, which is exactly what we're in right now. The central problem with sentiment is that it changes suddenly, and for as of yet unknown reasons, former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan specifically outlined this problem in one of his annual Humphrey Hawkins testimonies before the U.S. Congress. Sentiment and confidence is like an avalanche, which with one gust of wind or a simple, single snowflake is suddenly triggered. As you can see, stock prices run in cycles. Periods of repricing are usually quick and powerful. Here's a way to consider the possibility of the degree of expected sentiment shifts from a longer term perspective and decide just how large a potential avalanche might be. Now let's consider how to interpret how sentiment may soon react. It is getting nervous, as this work by Tyler Durden graphically suggests. A 2.8% drop in stocks is all it takes, apparently, or at least it looks like it right now, to convert near full euphoria into outright panic. Quite a collapse in confidence for a blip in stocks. Note this collapse in sentiment is bigger and faster than the plunge in August 2015 following China's devaluation and the U.S. flash crash. At the same time, the plunge in stocks has hammered Bank of America's Merrill Lynch's Global Panic Euphoria Index out of euphoria currently. On a global basis, put-call ratios signal less euphoria than a month ago, and volatility has risen, taking global risk-love indicator from a protracted period in euphoria to barely inside the neutral zone, with most of CNN's fear and greed factors suddenly flashing extreme fear. But there's just one big caveat, almost 40% of the S&P members are now trading below their 200-day moving averages. And that is what years of central bank conditioning does for investors' risk appetite when you overlay it and talk about sentiment here. The following research by Dr. Ed Yardeni shows how closely the Consumer Comfort Index, a measurement of sentiment and confidence, in fact tracks the forward S&P 500 PE. The, comfort, the Consumer Comfort Index slightly leads, which allows you to get a heads up on a potential shift. Let me just go through this particular chart 
And that is, one, the fundamental stock market indicator that, that Ed Yardeni uses, called the FSMI, rose to a new record high during the week of August 19th. It has been very highly correlated with the S&P 500 since 2000. The FSMI isn't a leading index of the S&P 500. Nothing leads the S&P 500 since it is a leading indicator itself and is one of the 10 components of the Conference Board's Index of Leading Economic Indicators. His indicator simply confirms or raises doubts about the underlying trend in the stock market. Its new high certainly confirms that a bullish trend in stocks currently remains intact. The FSMI comprises just three components that reflect the underlying strength or weakness in the domestic and global economies. It is the average of the Consumer Comfort Index, which is a four-week average, and the four-week average of the Boom-Bust Barometer, which is the CRB Raw Material Spot Price Index weekly average divided by the weekly initial unemployment claims. Two, the CRB Raw Industrial Spot Price Index is up 30% since it bottomed in late 2015. It has stalled during late 2016 through the first half of 2017, but has been advancing again in recent weeks. One of its 13 components is the price of copper, which has gone vertical in recent days, and I've done a number of posts on what's happening with copper. The boom-bust barometer, or the BBB, is simply the ratio of the CRB raw industrial spot price index divided by initial unemployment claims. To smooth it out, Jardini tracks the four-week moving average, which is extremely pro-cyclical. The BBB has taken off like a rocket ship since late 2015 and has been in record high territory all the way through the summer. It is also highly correlated with the S&P 500 since 2000. That's not surprising since it is highly correlated with another very pro-cyclical indicator, namely the S&P 500 forward earnings. Now, Here's what we really have to pay attention to with all of this. Consumer confidence is the third component of the FSMI, which averages the weekly consumer comfort index and the BBB. While the BBB is highly correlated with the S&P 500, the FSMI better tracks the stock index. That's because the BBB is highly correlated with forward earnings and the weekly consumer comfort index is highly correlated with the S&P 500 forward PE. The weekly consumer comfort index has recovered sharply since late 2011 and so has the PE. They've been highly correlated where we're starting to see the beginnings of a divergence. And this is what we need to be watching very closely and what happens with a measurement such as the Consumer Comfort Index that Bloomberg puts out quite regularly on a monthly basis. You can be assured sentiment will soon abruptly change, whether it's a few months out or a couple quarters. It is going to happen. The key is for you to be able to find when it's happening, identify that it is happening um, before it happens to you. Remember how we began, and I suggested we put aside the noise for a moment. Let's get back to this. The perfect storm, that is rising debt ceiling, passing a new budget through Congress, and tax reform is now about to shake up sentiment. Three black swans, the Chinese debt meltdown, ECB and Mario Drahi's running out of bullets, and Janet Yellen overshooting possibly on quantitative tightening, can also dramatically shift sentiment, confidence, consumer comfort. Or the turn in the business cycle and credit cycles, which I have written about many times, also suggesting we can expect to see a recession sooner than much later. So what it tells us is we're getting all the signals that would suggest they would lead to a shift in sentiment, that would drive a shift in sentiment, and that sentiment is the last straw when markets really start to roll over and fall off. So make sure you're fully prepared. Remember, the top 5% and the bottom 5% of market gains are always the most expensive. I have found, in my experience, that's the time to simply stand aside and let it play out because then you still have all your money to come back in and take advantage of those who didn't wait. Knowing this, remember, the central banks and the government will print money to solve any and all foreseen or possible problems until such time as no one will take the money or it is of no value. We're still early in this process, so the plans and the reaction will be significant, and you can expect that. That day is still in the future, 
So take advantage of the opportunities as they currently exist. Investing is always easier when you know with relative certainty how the powers to be will react. Your chances of success go up dramatically. I would like to take a moment as a reminder, do not trade from any of these slides. They are for educational and discussion purposes only. Thank you for listening and until next month, May 2017 turn out to be an outstanding investment year for you and your family. Thank you for listening.